What happens when the so-called tech leader of the world gets outpaced by the very country it tried to block? Simple. America panics while China just builds. And that's exactly what's happening right now in the global chip war. You've probably heard the news. China has just told its domestic companies to stop buying U.S. chips, especially from NVIDIA, and instead support local chip makers. This comes right after the H20 scandal where NVIDIA tried sneaking a slightly weaker chip into China to bypass Biden's export ban. But guess what? China wasn't fooled. They've had enough. And now the U.S. might have just pushed its last golden goose out of the nest. But to really understand why this is such a big deal, we have to rewind a bit. The whole mess started with Washington's obsession with controlling China's tech rise. Under the first Trump admin, the U.S. launched the infamous trade war not just on steel, solar panels, and consumer goods, but on technology itself. He slapped tariffs left and right, hoping China would cave in. Spoiler alert, China didn't. Instead, they doubled down, poured billions into research, and started building their own alternatives. Then came Biden, who didn't reverse the policy like some people hoped. Instead, he took it further. In 2022, his administration dropped the hammer by banning exports of high-end AI chips to China, specifically the powerful GPUs from companies like NVIDIA and AMD that are crucial for training large AI models. The idea was simple. If China can't buy the best chips, China can't build the best AI. It looked clever on paper. In reality, it backfired. Because here's the thing about restrictions. They don't stop innovation. They fuel it. And in just a few short years, China's response has been nothing short of jaw-dropping. Take AI, for example. Remember DeepSeek? That AI model developed in China that's been blowing up headlines recently. It's powerful, efficient, and trained without relying on America's latest chips. It shocked analysts who assumed Chinese AI would be years behind OpenAI or Google. Instead, DeepSeek proved that China isn't just catching up. They're setting new benchmarks. And it's not just DeepSeek. Companies like Alibaba have been building their own large language models, competing head-to-head -head with Silicon Valley's best. In driverless technology, Chinese firms like Pony.ai and Baidu's Apollo Go already have fleets of robotaxis running in cities. Meanwhile, in the U.S., Waymo still struggles to expand beyond a few neighborhoods in San Francisco and Phoenix. Oh, and let's not forget the humanoid robots. You've seen the clips. Robots in China, boxing, dancing, and even doing service jobs. Compare that to Boston Dynamics Atlas, which was retired this year because it was too costly to keep developing. It's almost symbolic. The U.S. is stepping back while China is stepping forward. The gap has only got wider since Trump entered his second term and slashed all sorts of science and technological research, focusing instead on kicking out immigrants and banning people for talking about Gaza. Now, chips are the foundation of all of this. Without semiconductors, AI, robotics, and automation are just science fiction. And this is where China's determination really shows. Over the last five years, China has thrown massive state support into building its semiconductor industry from the ground up. At first, critics laughed. They said China couldn't possibly make high-end chips without U.S. equipment. But slowly and steadily, Chinese firms like SMIC have been closing the gap. Reports show they're already producing chips close to 7 nanometers, something the U.S. swore would be impossible under sanctions. And here's the kicker. As China rises, Taiwan's dominance as the world's chip foundry is shrinking in importance. TSMC is still a big player, yes, but it's no longer untouchable. Chinese self-reliance means Taiwan's role as America's ace in the hole is fading fast. For decades, Washington could rely on Taipei's factories as leverage against Beijing. But if China doesn't need TSMC anymore, then that entire strategy collapses. Meanwhile, look at Intel. Once the proud leader of the global chip industry, now a shadow of its former self. Intel has fallen so far behind TSMC and Samsung that even the U.S. government is throwing billions in subsidies just to keep it alive. Remember when Intel was the name you trusted for every computer? Today, they're losing contracts, losing credibility, and, some would argue, losing the plot entirely. Even NVIDIA, America's poster child for AI hardware, is under fire. The H20 scandal exposed just how desperate the company is to keep selling to China, even when Washington is trying to stop it. Even when the second Trump admin is going even harder on the trade war, even slapping tariffs on friends and foes alike, 
pounding India and Brazil with a hefty 50% while starting off strong against China with over 100%, but very quickly backing down. The trend is clear. The U.S. is slowing down and China is accelerating. In fact, you could say America is walking while China is sprinting. And while all of this is happening, countries like India aren't even in the race. New Delhi talks a lot about being a tech hub, but let's be honest, they're nowhere near building advanced AI chips or humanoid robots. India is still struggling to build basic infrastructure, let alone cutting-edge semiconductors. Now, why does all this matter? Because technology isn't just about gadgets or fancy apps, it's about power. Whoever controls the chips controls the future. And right now, despite all of Washington's bans, restrictions, and sanctions, it's China that looks like the future. Think about the irony for a second. The U.S. tried to cripple China's AI sector by cutting off access to chips. Instead, it forced China to become self-sufficient faster. If anything, America has accelerated its own decline in this area. Meanwhile, China has shown the world that sanctions are not a wall. They're a speed bump. And this is where the conversation about global influence comes in. For decades, America built its dominance on two things, the dollar and technology. If it loses its lead in semiconductors and AI, that dominance starts to crack. Already, we're seeing more countries look to China for partnerships in AI, robotics, and infrastructure projects. Beijing is presenting itself as not just a fast follower, but a true leader of the digital age. And if you're wondering how quickly the shift is happening, just remember, five years ago, the idea of China making competitive AI chips was a joke. Today, it's reality. In another five years, who knows? The balance of power and technology may have completely flipped. The United States likes to say it's the land of innovation. But innovation requires openness, investment, and a willingness to take risks. What we're seeing instead is fear-driven policy bans, tariffs, and political games that stifle rather than spark progress. China, on the other hand, is taking that pressure and turning it into fuel. So let's not sugarcoat it. The chip war that Washington started is being won by Beijing. America is tripping over its own policies while China is building the future. And that brings us back to where we started. China has now canceled U.S. chips and told its companies to go local. This isn't just a procurement change. It's a declaration, a declaration that China no longer needs to play by America's rules because it can write its own. To sum it up, the U.S. tried to block China, but all it did was speed up China's rise. AI models like DeepSeek, companies like Alibaba, fleets of driverless trucks, humanoid robots, you name it, China is making it happen. Meanwhile, the U.S. chip industry is wobbling, Intel is collapsing, NVIDIA is under fire, and Taiwan's relevance is fading. The future of technology is shifting east, and the U.S. might not be able to stop it. If you found this breakdown helpful and eye-opening, don't forget to hit that subscribe button. Also, feel free to drop a like and a comment to further discussion. Thanks for watching. Or